In the last video, we had a look at building this retrieval chain, which allowed us to fetch information from a data source. And in this case, we scraped information from this web page, and we were then able to ask our model questions about the content on this page. So let's take this one step further, and let's add chat history to this chain, and this will do two things. The model will be able to recall information from the chat history, and the user will be able to ask follow-up questions. To save some time, let's copy the code from the previous lesson, and then let's create a new file called conversation retrieval chain.js, and let's paste in that code. And you can also find the source code by going to this GitHub repo, and then go to lessons, and then click on lesson four, and then copy the code from this retrieval chain file. Let's do some housekeeping first, and let's refactor this code to make it a bit more readable. First, we have all of this code here that's responsible for fetching the data, and then creating the vector store. So just above loader, I'll create a new function called create vector store. We don't need any parameters, but we do have to set this function to async, and we can then move all of this code from the loader all the way down to vector store into this function, like so. And at the end of this function, I'll simply return the vector store. So this function will scrape the data from any web page. It will then split that data into smaller chunks, giving us this split docs array. I'm actually going to remove this console log. We then have our embeddings function. And lastly, we create our vector store using those split documents and the embeddings function. Let's also create a function for creating our chain. Let's call this create chain is equal to an anonymous function which needs to be async. And then in this code, let's first grab the definition of the model all the way to the chain, and let's move this to this function. Then let's also move this retriever and retriever chain logic into this function as well. Let's remove this comment over here. And also at the top of the code, let's remove this comment. Let's simply replace it with load data and create vector store. And for the create chain, we'll add a comment as well, just to say create retrieval chain. And what this chain will do is it will instantiate our model. We will also create our prompt template. And this prompt template will take in the context as well as the input from the user. I can also then remove this comment. We then create a create stuff documents chain. And just as a reminder, this chain will allow us to pass in an array of documents, which will be used as context. We then define our retriever, and it is this retrieval function that's responsible for fetching the relevant documents from the vector store. And then lastly, to tie everything together, we created this create retrieval chain which takes in our combined docs chain as input as well as the retriever. What I do want to do is to rename this chain to something like conversation chain. And then at the end of this function, let's simply return this conversation chain. I'm only calling it this since this will be the last chain in our code, which we will interact with. So outside of these functions, let's call create vector store, which we need to await and let's assign this to a variable called vector store. Then lastly, let's create our chain, which is equal to await create chain. And this takes in our vector store as input. Then we can simply replace this with chain. Then everything should still work, but let's test it out by opening the terminal and let's run node conversation retrieval chain and let's press enter and in the response we do get the correct answer back so this code is working but hopefully you'll agree it's way easier to read now now let's see how we can add conversation history to this chain what we could do is add chat history within this prompt so perhaps we could have some text like chat history with a variable called chat history and then somehow during the conversation we'll build up this array of chat history and then pass in that array when we call the chain so at the point where we invoke the chain we could call this property chat history and pass in 
an array of messages. And spoiler alert, that is exactly what we will do, but it's not that simple. The chat history will be an array of Langchain messages. In other words, an array of message objects. Let me show you what those objects look like. And let's actually create some test data to stop this chat history. So first let's create this test array called chat history. Let's call it const chat history, which is an array of messages. And these messages use a special schema from Langchain. So let's import those from Langchain. So at the top of the code, let's import something from at Langchain slash core slash messages. And from messages, we can import those special message types like AI message, which is the response from the AI, as well as human message, which will represent the message from the human. Let's use these messages to create a fake chat history. So let's scroll down to our chat history array and let's add a few messages like new human message and let's give it a value of hello and let's then say that the ai responded with a message of hi how can i help you and let's add another human message with a value of my name is leon then let's add a new ai message with a value of hi leon how can i help you and then let's add another human message with a value of what is LCEL. Then lastly, let's add an AI message with a value of LCEL stands for Langchain Expression Language. All right, so now we've got this fake chat history, which we want to inject into the conversation so that we could ask a question like, what is it? Now, obviously without the chat history, the model would have no idea what we are referring to here. But you will notice that once we include the chat history and we ask this question, the model will know that we are referring to LCEL. So now that we have this chat history, let's pass this array into this chain, but we are not quite done yet. We can try to run this, but we will receive an error. And in fact, instead of receiving an error, I am receiving some very odd text over here and that is because we cannot simply pass in an array into this placeholder this placeholder is expecting text to be passed into it and not an array luckily this is very easy to fix instead of using from template we will use from messages instead and instead of using the string from messages takes in an array of key value pairs so the first one will be the system message with the value of answer the user's questions based on the following context then secondly we will pass in the user's input as the variable input now we can inject the history into this prompt by using a placeholder object at the top of this code, let's import something from at langchain slash core slash prompts. Then from prompts, we need to import the messages placeholder class. Then in the prompt template, we can instantiate a new instance of the messages placeholder class. And we will call this placeholder chat underscore history. And let's add a comma at the end of the sentence. Now what this messages placeholder class will do is accept our array of messages and then convert those into strings. That makes our life so much easier. Let's go ahead and run this code again by running node conversation retrieval chain. And this time we should receive our answer, which we do. Let's also change the question to something like, what is my name? And this information only exists in the history. Let's run the script again and we get an answer of your name is Leon. So our chain is definitely responding to our history. So in our applications, all we really have to do is append a new entry to this array whenever we receive input from the user and whatever we get from the response in fact response.answer we can append to this array as well 
using the AI messages class. We can actually improve the results from our model even further. First, let's change this back to what is it, and then let's have a look at how we can improve this. It is also possible to include this chat history when we fetch documents from the vector store. So in other words, the user's question as well as the chat history will be taken into account when we retrieve the results from the database. Let me show you how to do this. So in our solution, we have this retriever object, which we can use to fetch documents from the vector store. And this will return the two most relevant documents to our code. We also attach this retriever function to our create retrieval chain. Unfortunately, this retriever does not allow us to pass in the chat history. So therefore, we need to make use of something called the history aware retriever, which we can import from Langchain. So let's import something from Langchain slash chains slash history aware retriever. And from this, we want to import the create history aware retriever function. Then let's go back to our code. Just below our retriever, let's create a const of history aware retriever. This is equal to await, oh then the function that we just imported called create history aware retriever. This takes in an object as input. The first property that we need to specify is the LLM, which we called model. Then we need to specify our retriever, which we called retriever. And lastly, we need to specify a property called rephrase prompt, which we will have a look at next. Now, first, let me explain what this function will do. The standard retriever is simply taking the input string from the user and then passing that to the vector store to fetch the relevant documents. But obviously, if we include the history, that's not enough. We need a way of taking the user's input as well as this chat history and then converting all of this into a simple query which will then be passed to the database. And that is exactly what this history aware retriever will do. But in order for this retriever to understand how to format this query, we need to pass in a rephrase prompt. And this is nothing more than a simple prompt template. So just above this, let's create that prompt template. Let's call it retriever prompt, which is equal to chat prompt template dot from messages and we are using from messages and not from template because we will be passing in the chat history into this prompt as well and this method takes an array as input and here we will include the chat history and the input from the user so let's start with the chat history so we can call new messages placeholder with the key of chat history. Then let's pass in the input from the user by specifying this key value pair of user and the variable input. Then lastly, let's specify another user message with a value of given the above conversation, generate a search query to look up in order to get information relevant to the conversation. You can simply copy this from my GitHub repo, but I found this in the Langchain documentation. Now we can simply pass in this retriever prompt into our history aware retriever. So now in our create retrieval chain, instead of passing the normal retriever, we can now pass in the history aware retriever instead. Let's go ahead and test this. In the terminal, let's run our script. And in the terminal, we do get the correct response back. This is quite hard to demonstrate in a tutorial like this, but we can see exactly what's going on behind the scenes by viewing the results in Langsmith. So this is not a Langsmith tutorial and we will cover Langsmith in a future video since not everyone has access to Langsmith yet, but Langsmith is a very useful tool for seeing exactly what's going on behind the scenes. We can see the results of our last run by opening up this entry and under retrieve documents, we can see this entry over here. And this is what our retriever did is it took in the input history. So our human and AI messages, and it then produced a search query for our vector store over here. And then in our vector store retriever, 
It is that query that was used to retrieve these documents. And of course, if we have a look at our final chat OpenAI call, we can see our system message up until here, and then we can see the context from this retriever was injected into this prompt over here. And we can also see our chat history, so the human and AI messages. And then lastly, the final output from the model. 